body is affected by how much load it carries. Too much or too little load makes your body feel and function poorly. Astronauts are well aware of this. When out in space, their bodies change over time, caused by their weightlessness. Over a period of six months in space, the skeletons of astronauts can lose up to a fifth of their bone mass, making the skeleton weaker. And the muscles, which are not under load, lose their strength faster. But what about the tendons that attach the muscles to the skeleton? Yes, this is still more or less unknown. But in here, we find a group of researchers who are in the process of changing that. So how's it going? Uh, good, we got some scans running. We've got some uh, preliminary results here. So this must be one of the healing tendon. Yes. Because our body's tendons are the focus of Hannah Isaacson's team here at Lund University. So we are working with the tendons. We are looking at how movement or mechanical loading is affecting the tendons structure and behavior. And we're working both with intact and healing tendons. And we're focusing primarily on the Achilles tendon. Hannah has always been active in athletics. She is an avid runner and even has a marathon under her list of accomplishments. Many athletes are well acquainted with the Achilles heel. This is the body's largest tendon and attaches the calf muscle to the heel. But there is a risk of the Achilles tendon tearing off, which many athletes fear. Achilles tendon ruptures are becoming more and more common as we engage in sports more and more and into older ages. And while bones often heal without any detriment, ruptured tendons are more difficult to heal. And the actions we take when an accident occurs are crucial to this healing. So the mechanical loading affects the healing process. We know that if we have too low loading, there will be a negative impact on the healing, whereas too high amount of loading can lead to a high risk of re-rupture of the tendon. There is a window in between there which may have positive effects. But it's complex cases, and about 50% of all tendon ruptures don't regain complete function afterwards. The task of the tendon is to transfer the movement and power of the muscle to the skeleton, but also to dampen the forces so that these movements become softer. Tendons, therefore, need to be both strong and elastic. To achieve this, the tendon consists of long fibers of the protein collagen. But to function well, the collagen needs to be assembled in the same direction as the muscle pulls the tendon. If proteins end up misaligned, the tendon's functionality worsens. In order to study the tendon fibers in as much detail as possible, Hannah's team uses MAX-4, the new synchrotron light facility outside Lund. This entire building works as a single super microscope, which gives Hannah's team new opportunities to study the collagen of the healing tendon. And then... is, that the same? is that the same sample, the second one? Yep. No, that and the next one? Yeah. So here we have the scattering pattern uh, with the interference peaks that we see here. So we're looking at the nanostructure of the components inside the tendon. Uh, we're looking at primarily the collagen and how it is formed and how it is aligned. So in the center part of this image, which is where the newly formed tissue is after the rupture, you can see that there is some collagen that has formed in between the stumps, um, but that it doesn't have the perfect structure yet. It doesn't have the the same properties as the intact collagen has. From the Synchrotron Light Laboratory, Hannah's team also gets unique 3D images of the Achilles tendon cross-section. These pictures reveal new details in the structure of the tendon. Using various images from the Synchrotron, Hannah's team can mathematically build up a computer simulation of the Achilles tendon. 
Hey. Yeah, the simulations are coming along. Yeah. So here we have the production of collagen in the healing tendon. So with these type of simulations, we can do experiments inside the computer. And then we can look at specific mechanisms and phenomena in more detail than we can do from real experiments. And we also have the possibility to do experiments inside the computer rather than in reality. With the new knowledge from the simulations, researchers can learn the best way for a damaged tendon to heal. By understanding how mechanical loading is affecting the tendon, we hope to be able to create better treatment options for healing Achilles tendons, but ultimately also to get better understanding of all the tendons in the body. Hanna and her team are just at the beginning of their research on tendons. But their results can be important for how we treat damaged tendons in the future and give us a broader knowledge of how the tendons in our bodies are affected under usual stresses. And also, perhaps, how they are affected under unusual stresses.